signs of life are returning to the exclusion zone. After the Chernobyl disaster, it seemed that nothing would grow here forever. But years later, the exclusion zone began to show signs of life. Wild animals have found their nest here, and plants have begun to sprout in the most contaminated areas. The Chernobyl exclusion zone became a real laboratory for studying the impact of radiation on the living world. Friends, before I begin, I want to thank you for watching my videos. According to my channel statistics, only a third of the people who watch me are subscribed. Please, if you are interested in what I do, subscribe to my channel. This way you will support me. Thank you. So, let's move on. Here you can see which species survive in this extreme environment and which simply die. Tourists and fans of the HBO series Chernobyl come here to see with their own eyes everything that is happening today. 1. Against all odds, animals in the Chernobyl zone survived. On April 26, 1986, a catastrophic nuclear explosion occurred in Chernobyl, which was caused by errors in the planned design and inadequate training of nuclear plant personnel. The release of radioactive substances severely damaged the environment, hundreds of times the level of radiation from the atomic bombing of Hiroshima. The Chernobyl disaster severely damaged the environment, but nature showed its survivability. The redwood forest is one example. The color of the leaves of the trees turned black and looked like rust. The radioactive trees were destroyed. In the exclusion zone, there was also a shooting of stray animals, which was organized by the Soviet military. However, many species of animals and plants survived, developed, and even now continue to live in the disaster zone. According to scientists, the area near the Chernobyl nuclear power plant will remain dangerous for human life for another 20,000 years. 2. Chernobyl returns to the wilderness due to lack of humans. The Chernobyl disaster was an accidental experiment that showed that nature justifies itself without human intervention. Hunting is forbidden and no one is encouraged to live there. The newly created nature reserve on the Belarusian side of the exclusion zone is Europe's largest experiment in restoring nature. Animals are no longer afraid of people. Due to the absence of people in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, animals here are less stressed and can adapt more easily than in populated areas. 3. There are more bears and wolves than people in the Chernobyl disaster area. After the Chernobyl accident, the fauna of the exclusion zone came to an unstable state, but several decades later, scientific research has shown a surprising phenomenon the population of large animals has surpassed their numbers before the disaster. Already after several decades of research, the endangered European lynx species, as well as a wide variety of beavers, moose, bison, wolves and bears, are believed to have found their home in the exclusion zone. Thus, this zone proved that the animal world is able to adapt to extreme conditions and continue its existence. Regular exposure to radiation certainly does not have a positive effect. However, it may not be so dangerous for some fauna as to exceed the harm caused by disturbing their habitat and actively hunting wild animals. For example, wolves can take advantage of their ability to travel long distances to reduce the amount of radiation they receive while hunting. This gives them some advantages over other animals. For, thanks to Chernobyl, the endangered wild horse is coming back. Prowalski's horses are unique members of the fauna, giving us a chance to experience the spirit of the wild. Unlike other so-called wild horses that have found freedom, Prowalski's horses are actually the remnants of an ancient breed that was domesticated by humans several millennia ago. Although, there are other opinions, for example, the National Zoo and the Smithsonian Conservation Biology Institute call these horses a completely wild species. It is more correct to say that Prowalski's horses are wild horses in the true sense of the word, as they have not been domesticated and have never experienced human civilization. However, the population of these animals is declining from year to year, making it highly likely that we will lose their invaluable gene pool. Therefore, instead of arguing about terminology, we need to address the preservation of these unique animals, which are part of our national heritage. Be that as it may, Prowalski's horses retain their natural instincts and are not accustomed to life in captivity. In 1994, Lee Boyd and Catherine A. Haupt, who wrote a book about the species, report that the last sighting of the animal occurred in the late 1960s, and the species is now extinct in the wild. 
Environmentalists Mike Wood and Nick Beresford of Great Britain, who specialize in studying the effects of radiation on wildlife in Chernobyl, have drawn attention to the thriving Prowalski's horse in the exclusion zone. About 30 Prowalski's horses were released in the Ukrainian part of the Chernobyl exclusion zone in the late 1990s. Today, the number of these animals has grown to more than 200. Based on photographs taken with camera traps, Wood has come to believe that some of the horses identified by the stamps are still alive. In addition, images of young horses and foals indicate a growing population. 5. Radiation may have decimated insects in Chernobyl. In 2009, in the radioactive contamination zones around the Chernobyl and Fukushima nuclear disasters, scientists recorded a decrease in the number of insects, spiders and some other species, cicadas and butterflies. At the same time, in other animals this phenomenon is not noted. It may be connected with damage of their DNA cells and further impossibility of reproduction. Such consequences should definitely be taken into account in the design of new nuclear power plants. 6. Are the Chernobyl animals mutants? The Chernobyl disaster had a significant impact on animal and plant life. A 2011 study confirmed that genetic changes in animals increased 20-fold, which can affect the survival of many species. Further research is needed to better understand how genetic mutations affect populations of living organisms, especially the rare bird species most affected by the disaster. Information gleaned from the research will be important in developing measures to protect and conserve the diversity of animal and plant life. In 2018, scientist Michael Byrne studied the movement of a wolf that had moved far away from the exclusion zone. He wondered if Chernobyl animals could transmit large numbers of mutations to other populations in dangerous proportions. Byrne maintains a calm tone when it comes to his assumptions, I don't mean to say that animals from Chernobyl are contaminating the whole world. But if there are any forms of mutations that can be inherited, that has to be taken into account. 7. Radiation may not manifest itself as it is commonly believed. There are myths about mutants around the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in the exclusion zone, but this is not true. The rational explanation for the video that circulated in 2016 about large catfish in the pond, it's not due to radiation, but to feeding in the pond and conditions. This confirms that the exclusion zone is not an area where mutants live but a radioactive area where nature can be observed without the harmful effects of human exposure. The big catfish is a rather large fish. With its huge size, it is impressive and worthy of attention even outside of Chernobyl. Some peculiarities have been noticed in the area, and guides warn tourists that it is better not to touch the Chernobyl animals, because their fur may contain radioactive particles. However, modern wild animals have a normal number of limbs and do not glow. The explosion of the fourth reactor at Chernobyl led to the most serious genetic mutations in people exposed to radiation. 30 people died of acute radiation sickness, but the effects continue to manifest themselves to this day. The authenticity of the long-term lethal effects of the disaster is still a matter of debate. However, there is information that the rate of thyroid cancer among people, especially children, who were exposed to radiation at Chernobyl has increased. It was probably through eating contaminated food. But the study showed that parents who encountered genetic mutations due to radiation did not pass these mutations on to their children, yes, this is truly amazing. Unfortunately, radioactive contamination can travel through air, water and soil, which can cause additional problems. Therefore, measures must be taken to protect the public and the environment in the affected area to minimize the effects of nuclear disasters. In addition, safety precautions must be taken when handling radioactive materials and improper disposal of radioactive waste must be avoided. In general, a comprehensive system of safety measures, which includes both technical and organizational measures, is necessary to prevent the potential threat of possible similar disasters. 8. A number of disturbing trends are observed in voles. Not only iodine-131, but also other radioactive isotopes are present in significant amounts. For example, the half-life of cesium-137 exceeds 30 years. Some animals are exposed to high levels that are out of proportion to their adaptive capabilities. One risk factor is the animal's diet. 
For example, voles are adorable little rodents that love to eat lots of mushrooms. Unfortunately, some kinds of mushrooms are particularly good at collecting radiation and transmitting it to hungry voles, which gradually kills them. It has already been proven that these animals demonstrate the negative effects of radiation in several ways. Studies have shown that animals in areas with high concentrations of radiation are less fecund, resulting in lower overall population numbers. Animals inside the exclusion zone have been shown to have higher rates of cataracts compared to animals outside the zone. 9. What about the birds? Numerous studies by scientists have confirmed that swallowtails in the disaster area exhibit elevated levels of partial albinism, most likely the result of genetic mutations associated with radiation. In addition, bird populations with lower brain masses, low species diversity, and reduced numbers have appeared in areas with elevated radiation levels. Thus, the story of the animals of Chernobyl is not just a story of the return of the Earth to heavenly conditions, but the contaminated wasteland that everyone imagines. 10. Some dogs from Chernobyl were arranged for adoption. Many dogs were abandoned by their owners during the evacuation of the site in April 1986. Hundreds of these animals found their new home in the abandoned area. Currently, the Clean Future Fund is assisting with spay and neuter campaigns at the site. They also provide medical care, vaccinations and even food for puppies and cats affected by the Chernobyl disaster. Several dogs with safe radiation levels were found back in 2018 and 2019, of which several dozen were successfully adopted. 11. People living in the exclusion zone. Some people living in the Chernobyl exclusion zone have also adopted dogs that were previously near them. Although there are laws that forbid living in the disaster zone, there are actually people who continue to do so, some of them even with the quiet consent of the authorities. People who settle on their own are called self-settlers or self-settlers. They are mostly elderly people who lived in the area before the nuclear disaster. Various reasons led these people to the exclusion zone, and they believe that the risks from radiation are not as significant as other considerations, example, financial, cultural, and geopolitical. I thank you for watching. Your support is very important to me. Your comments and thumbs up motivate me to release new videos on interesting topics. Subscribe and turn on notifications. See you in the new videos.